Hello YouTube chess lovers, my friends, this is Gunjan here. Welcome to the 26th episode of Dirty Chess Tricks. In this episode, I'm going to show you some of the wonderful tricks in the Exeter London system from the white perspective. We are starting with the main line which arises after the move order d4, d5, bishop to f4, knight to f6, knight to f3, c5, e3, knight to c6, c3, e6, knight b to d2, and now bishop to d6. So this position can be reached via different move order, and this is one of the most popular response from the black perspective. Here there are two moves exist, but first I like to continue with the mainline move that is bishop to g3, and after black castle and white plays bishop to d3, black has two popular choice in this position. First let's consider queen to e7, well after that white should continue with the move knight to e5 and more often here black continue with the move knight to d7, try to get rid of this centralized knight. In this position f4 is most frequently played response by white. But instead of that, I am going to recommend a very tricky move that is knight captures d7. And trick is set right here. Black has two choices, but amongst them, bishop captures d7 looks very natural. But in fact, it turns out that this move leads to the instant disaster. Let's see how. So here, white first of all take this bishop. After queen takes, White will take another pawn and after queen takes, white give black this ultimate shock. Bishop captures at 7. Boom! Well, black response is forced. Black cannot play king to h8 due to the move queen to h5. So that's why king captures at 7 is forced. But after that, white will give this check and after king to g8, white has planned this amazing shot knight to e4 attacking the queen and that knight is eager to go to the g5 square. I got two games in this position. In the first game my opponent tried the move g6 so counter attacking my queen but after knight captures, pawn captures, knight captures d7 attacking the rook, rook to d8 but then knight to f6 check regain one more pawn with white has a clear two pawn advantage. So it's very obvious that here black has to move the queen and after the move queen to b6, white obviously play knight to g5 and there's a checkmate threat on that 7 square. Here it is very obvious that black has to move the rook to safeguard the mate. So rook to e8 looks very obvious but then white has this sequence that is queen check king to h8 and now simple but very effective castle on the king side and even though materially white is down black position is completely losing. Now just to illustrate my point in the game my opponent who is 2100 rated he continued with the move knight to e7. I responded with the move f4 and you can see the easiest but very effective plan by the white what white wants to do is he wants to play rook to f3, rook to h3 and checkmate black king. Even though white is allowing this check but after that black is completely hopeless to stop our plan. After a long thought my opponent come up with the move knight to f5 but it's not going to stop anything because rook to f3 comes anyways and in the game he has to give up his queen but we should see that what happens if queen try to run away, let's say queen to d2, then we have rook check and after knight to h6, rook takes h6, pawn takes and queen to h7 as a checkmate. 
So this is a very tricky idea by White, which recently comes into the limelight, which completely stop bishop to d7 idea. Well, you may ask what happens if queen captures d7? Well, here my recommendation is if you're playing with a lower seeded opponent, then you should capture the c5 pawn and continue with your game. But if you are playing with a higher seeded opponent, then this is even better because you can get a forced draw after the following sequence that is bishop captures, queen captures, pawn captures, queen captures, and the same motifs. Yup, bishop captures at 7. After king takes queen check, king to g8 and knight to e4. If queen to b6, then pretty much we have the same story. But here black has the only saving resource that is g6. And you can see the big time difference over here that black bishop is not on d7. And that's why this counter is very effective. Nevertheless, white should continue with the move queen to g5 and after queen to e7 and knight to f6 check we have a force perpetual which leads to the draw. Okay, let's consider the second move that is b6 which in fact the highest played move in this position but against it I am going to recommend a very tricky move order starting with the move knight to e5. Now here if your opponent doesn't take this knight and continue his peace development such as bishop to b7 then I think after f4 white get an upgrade version of the stone wall where this dark square bishop is not sitting on c1 but it is actively participating in the game via the move h5. So that's why at this position many black player try to get rid of this knight as soon as possible with the move bishop captures e5. Okay white should continue with the move d captures e5 attacking the knight and after knight to d7 f4 is the most common reply over here but we are playing for the tricks and that's why i'm going to show you a very tricky move in this position that is knight to f3 defending the e5 square at first sight it looks like this is not good the simple reason is after queen to c7 that pawn is a goner yes indeed but white has a better idea and that is BAM! <laughs> okay, black has two options. If king to h8, then knight to g5 anyways. So white has a clear cut idea of queen to h5. So black needs to stop it with the move g6. But then the following continuation happens. That is bishop captures, pawn captures. Knight captures e6 attacking two spots, queen to b7 and after knight takes, knight takes and queen captures d5, white obtain rook and a four pawn for the two minor pieces which is almost a decisive advantage. So it's very obvious here that black has to capture this bishop but after that we are going to continue with the move knight check. Kindly note, if king to g8, then queen to h5 is a very deadly reply. So the only good move over here is king to g6. After that, white will continue with queen to c2 check. Now, if the king goes to the h6 or the h5 square, then after queen to h7, it is more or less checkmate scenario. So black has to play other moves. It is very important to understand that king cannot take this knight. The simple reason is after bishop to f4 check, king to g4, f3, king to h4, and queen to h7 is a good knight, sweet dream for the black king. So the only move to keep black in the game is f5, blocking the diagonal. But then white has this very simple move, e captures f6 discover check to the black king and same time hitting the queen and after the following continuation that is king captures f6 knight check king to e7 and bishop captures c7 white has a huge advantage now if you really want to trick your opponent especially in the official tournaments then the following trick is very useful because it's not a very common setup by wide and there are every chance that you can finish your opponent very quickly. 
Trick start with the unusual move, bishop captures d6. After queen captures d6, white should continue with the move bishop to b5. Now, it doesn't matter whether your opponent plays bishop to d7 or castle. Let's say in this game, black continue with the move castle on the king side. And white did the same. And after the move, bishop to d7, white should continue with the move a4. Well, it's very natural that black is going to kick this bishop with the move a6. And after the move, bishop to e2. You can see that black has enough protection to play the move e5 and liberate his position. And that's why even at the highest level, I have seen this move played by the black player. But can you believe black has made a blunder? Yes, indeed. Before I move on, I like you to pause this video and find out what is the refutation. Okay, I hope you find this wonderful move. Knight to c4. <laughs> well, sacrificing the whole piece and black has to accept it. Otherwise, the e5 pawn will be a goner. And after the move, d kept c4, white reveal his nasty idea, d captures e5. Attacking two piece, black responds is force, black has to exchange the queen. But even after the queen exchange, black is not out of the wood because white is still attacking two spots. The most logical response over here is bishop to e6, but then white can take this piece and the following move order will highlight not only white get an extra pawn, but black position will be completely shattered. Here white should continue with the move knight to d2. Kindly note b5 or knight to a5 doesn't matter. Let's say in this game black plays knight to a5 to defend his pawn. And now white plays the move knight to e4 hitting two spots which cannot be defended. Let's fast forward few moves knight to b3 knight f6 check, king to g7, knight to h5 check, and after king to h6 and rook to b1, not only white emerge with an extra pawn, but black pawn structures are completely ruined. The second setup I want to consider is when black plays this early c5 move. Well, here black has to be very careful as immediate queen to b6 is not a good move. The simple reason is white can play the move knight to c3 and now black can't even take this pawn because after knight to d5, this is almost a losing position in the opening. So this is a perfect beginner trap which many below 1600 players fall into. Black's idea is not to play queen to b6 but to play knight to c6 and after white responds with the move c3, Black continue with his energetic style with the move queen to b6. So because now white cannot play knight to c3, queen to b6 does make a lot of sense. Well here white should continue with the move queen to b3 and both the sides are hoping that other side will take his queen and in that case the a file will open up. Here the obvious response from the black is to play c4 provoking the queen exchange and white should certainly doesn't capture that queen and instead of that white should continue with the move queen to c2. And here comes one of the most amazing trick because at first sight it looks like black can hit this queen with the move bishop to f5 and white queen cannot take this bishop as the b2 pawn will fall. And surprisingly enough even one title player has tried against me but I think this is outright blunder. Black should play this bishop f5 move when his knight is already on f6 square. There's a reason why this is not possible because white can simply took this bishop and challenge black into the complications. Queen captures b2, what else? And white took the d5 pawn. Now if black plays queen to c1 check, then white can continue with the move king to e2 and this line is even better for the white and I have attached a sample line in the PGM which is available in description. So kindly go through it. The main move over here is queen captures rook which looks very obvious. But then white revealed his cunning idea with the move queen to b5. So not only defending the knight but attacking on b7. 
the most logical response is castle on the queen side and now you play bishop capture c4 and now white is all set to trap that bb in the corner <laughs> well it sounds strange but yup white is just three moves away to capturing that queen the best response goes as follows black plays e5 attacking the bishop here white more or less doesn't care about that piece he just want to get that queen so white has to play knight to e2 and after pawn captures bishop why should castle on the king side and now indeed knight to d2 is on the card and how the hell black king will escape black can play this counter attacking move a6 but then queen check king to b8 and queen to c2 confirms that queen is going to be lost so after a few moves let's say pawn captures pawn captures knight to f6 knight to d2 queen captures rook knight captures queen and we have a situation where white obtained queen and a pawn for the two rooks so in terms of material it looks a balanced position but the major factor is the central pawn are really cramping all the minor pieces now just to demonstrate how dangerous this position is for the black i like to show you one of my game against national master where he played rook to d7 defending the f7 i continue with the move e4 which prevent natural development of that bishop so my opponent decided to play bishop to e7 and i continue with my pawn roll e5 i think the knight he continue with the move knight to g4 i played queen to e4 hitting the knight he defended with the move h5 and now h3 knight to h6 and now comes the very simple tactic bishop captures e6 my opponent desperately looking for the counter play so he responded with the move f6 hitting my pawn center i responded with the move bishop to b5 and after pawn captures i played knight to e3 so you can already see black is in a big difficult situation he continued with the move e captures d4 but it turns out that this move is a big mistake because after knight captures d4 not only that knight vanished from the game but this knight check proves very deadly as after king to c7 and knight captures e7 white emerged with a great material advantage Third response I want to consider is Nimzo or Queen's Indian setup, which arises after the move order Knight to f6, and after Bishop to f4, Black responds with the move e6. Black's idea is after the move Knight to f3, he wants to play early c5, and after we play e3, he wants to continue with the move b6. So Bishop obviously go to the b7 square, where combined with the f6 Knight, it controls the e4 square. Now, just against this setup, I'm going to recommend a very tricky move order by White, which start with the move Knight B to D2, and after the move Bishop to B7, you should immediately put this Knight on the C4 square. So you can already see two pieces are lining on the D6 square, and if allowed, then White will certainly nab a Bishop pair with a very good advantage. So obviously, your opponent is not going to allow this, and they are going to play D6 or the D5 move where in either case, white obtain a winning position just early in the opening. Okay, let's see each by turn. First move I want to consider is d6, which on the surface looks so natural, but this is a blunder move. The simple reason is, after the pawn captures c5, white three pieces are attacking on d6, so black cannot capture with the b pawn. And if he captured with the d-pawn, then the situation is even worst because after queen captures, king captures, knight to g5, hitting the f7, and after king to e8, white has this star move, knight to e5, and now there is no way black can save this f7 pawn. Last but not least, what happens if your opponent plays d5? Well, white response is very obvious. White is going to play knight to e5, and now white has two threats, 
which I don't think black can defend both of them. Now, as I have highlighted over here, there are three ways black can try to stop these threats, but none of them succeed. First move I want to consider is knight b to d7 with stopping knight to g5 idea. But here white has this another threat that is bishop to b5, pinning the knight. And now indeed renewing the threat of knight to g5. I reached this position in one of my game where my opponent attacked my bishop with the move a6. But then comes knight to g5 anyways. After black captured my piece, I responded with the move knight captures f7 and after queen to e7 and knight captures h8, if allowed, the knight will come back into the life via f7 to d6 root. So my opponent played a6, but he completely missed that knight can go with the other root, that is knight to g6 attacking the queen, queen to d8, knight captures e6 attacking the queen, queen to c8 and now that dancing knight capture another piece with the move knight captures f8 and it's very funny that black cannot even touch that piece because after knight captures white has this lethal check knight to c7 and black is going to lose another exchange okay what happens if your opponent plays another knight move that is knight f to d7 well here White move order will remain same. White is going to pin that knight. And now we already know that if your opponent plays a6, we can continue with the move knight to g5. But here black has this cunning idea, f6, hitting this knight. Well, this time around, white can sacrifice another piece because black has weakened his king side. And here I'm proposing white should continue with the move knight to h5. After pawn captures and queen check, Kindly note, g6 is not possible because of the knight captures g6. So black has to forcefully play king to e7. Afterwards, white has this simple but very effective move, d captures e5. So the threat is very obvious, bishop to g5. And surprisingly enough, black can't do anything about it. The best black can play over here is knight to c6. But after bishop to g5, knight to f6, pawn captures, pawn captures and knight to g6, it is very clear that white is going to get an exchange. You may be wondering, hang on, that bishop is hanging, right? Yes, indeed, but after pawn captures, white has this queen check which regain his peace and with extra exchange, white will have an easy game. Last but not least, what happens if your opponent plays the move at 6? Well, it stopped one threat, but it doesn't do anything with the move bishop to b5 check. And now, however black blocks, he get worse position. So for example, knight f to d7 can be made by knight captures d7. And after knight captures d7, white can play the move knight to e5. So hitting the knight twice. The only good way to defend this is bishop to c8. But then white has this very tricky move queen to f3, which, believe it or not, gives white a winning advantage. Just to give you some sample lines, if your opponent plays bishop to d6, which at first sight looks very natural because he wants to get rid of this pesky knight, but then comes bishop captures d7 check, and after bishop captures d7, white has this lethal blow. Bishop to g5, bam! Queen is attacked, and there's a mate threatened. And if black try to save both the things with the move f6, then he can pack his bag and go home because we are going to checkmate him with the move queen check, king to e7, and now finishing knot, queen to f7. In this situation, the best move is queen to f6. But even though this doesn't stop white to gain his extra advantage, because after bishop to c6, hitting the rook and after rook to b8 white has this lethal move knight to g4 attacking queen attacking the rook and black position is completely collapsing that's it guys i hope you enjoy and learn this wonderful tricks in the exeter london system i'm personally using this system as my secret weapon 
and so far I have beat many 2000 plus rated player with these tricks in all formats of the game. The good point about these tricks are even though if your opponent doesn't fall for it, you still obtain a very good position. Well, thank you for watching this video. Feel free to like, subscribe and comment on my video and I'll meet you in my next episode very soon. Bye and take care. Thank you and congratulations. Once again, we will invite the winners of the Blitz. Okay, so let's see what's wrong with the move A6. After all, it's an initial move, it's kicking the knight. And what can be the bad? Well, here comes our shock weapon with the move Bishop to B6. Bam!